Hello everyone, it's me again. Yeah, it's me. I want to show you some more shift register stuff. And the last two videos I did, I figured why not do a third video, but it, everything kind of came out backwards with the way I did the video series because I didn't really mean to want to really go that extensive with shift registers. But I thought since I, I'm showing how to do a binary counter with Python, exactly how to do it, why not show you guys all in one step to show up to, to hook up shift registers to LEDs, okay? And I'm going to work with the 74HC595 shift register. I know nothing so far about the 165 shift register. I just know that one goes in as parallel and comes out serial, and the other goes in as serial and comes out like parallel, which is the one I have. Now, these shift registers can only run between 3 and 5 volts. My Raspberry Pi only has between 3 and 5 volts on it, nothing higher anyway. So I'm good to go with 5, and so far things are happy. Now, right off the bat, we're going to use my little lightning pole here. We just got to do something here. Now, right off the bat, we're going to look at the VCC, the voltage current collector, okay? Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that's what the letter C means. I'm just gonna call it that anyway. That's your voltage current right there. That's where all the positive power comes out. And this lead here will actually go into the right side of my breadboard. I could have the wire if I want coming over here, but it looked pretty messed up. So I'm gonna have the wires coming out the same side of the breadboard as the way the shift register is. This part's pointing rightward. So I'm going to place this on the breadboard on the positive side on the right of the shift register right here. Let's just say. Now down here is your ground. These two really matter, okay? You want to hook these up and make sure you got these hooked up or you won't get nothing to happen. Okay? This is your ground. This will go on your ground rail. You can slide along the rails with both sides, which I'm going to explain that. I live everything by the rails. I'm going to constantly mention the rails. I'm going to constantly mention the rails to you guys. But this is my ground here. And now before we get into these other pins here, sometimes you'll see letters like QA all the way to QH. Sometimes you'll see the word Q1 and Q0 all the way down to QH. There's two abbreviations, but they do the same thing. And these ones here, they're also the same. Sometimes you'll see different abbreviations for the same thing. Like our... Uh, RCLK might be something else, even though it does the same thing. Uh, number 10, sometimes they call that master. In this case, it's called SR, SRCL, CLR. So it's, uh, it's, I guess it's shift reset clock register or something like that. But I, I know how to work the registers. I just forget the total names of what they even do. I just know how to hook them up and make them go with lead so far. So, so far we got leads, okay? We have our LEDs that we're going to hook up, okay, After, and I'm going to show you these right off the bat too. Our LEDs that we're going to use started either Q0 if you want to call it that, or QA. All the way down up to Q1, or QB, down to QH, which is uh, Q7. Ground is number 8, okay? Ground is number 8, and 16 is, the, is your VCC, and number 9 will be where your output goes to the other shift registers from pin 14 when we daisy chain. When you don't daisy chain shift registers, you don't need to bother with this output 9 unless you want to use it for timers, which I'm still new at these shift registers. I've only known them for about a little over a year. I really don't know what it's safe to put on them. I got a lot of stuff I'm still researching. I got stuff in my Raspberry Pi. I haven't even got to play with yet because I got so much and I've only been into electronics just a little over two years with playing with breadboard electronics. I, I do want to teach myself to actually solder so I'm way behind, especially at the age I am. I'm old enough to be someone's grandfather almost. But anyway, back to what I was saying, this here is what we're going to learn along the way. All this stuff here, this 13 here is called your output enabled. When that is powered by the negative rail, it makes the bit turn off. It makes the it makes it go low. So this is something to do with I guess shifting the shifting the bits. But 
All we're going to have to worry about really though is the playing with the pin 14, 12 and 11. This pin's already set up as you'll be, as you'll see very soon. I got a lot of things that are already pre-done that are already set up that will be a lot easier for you to understand. But we are going to play with 14. This is pin 14 right here. We're going to play with 12 and we're going to play with 11. And uh, we're going to be playing with 9 too actually because 9 is going to be the output to the other daisy chaining of the registers. Okay, now here's where we start beginning our fun. We're just going to put our little lightning bolt back here. Stay there. Now this, this here is a layout. It's very tiny to me because I'm using uh, OBS and I, I can hardly see what I'm doing, but you'll just see what I'm doing. You know, you won't make out the writing here, but it's not important. Just look at the little shift registers for now. And look at the little tiny pins the way I got them. And the next page I'll show you even I'll show you them even better here. But this is how I got my shift register chip layout here. I got one single one, and you don't need to put an output on it because it's only one single register. You got two that can daisy chain, and then you got three that can daisy chain. And now down here I show the schematics of how you do it. Now mind you, when you see the example blow up of example number two, the two shift registers, I got one of the yellow rods over top of the blue because that was an earlier layout and I didn't catch that till after I drew the picture. But this is the evolved one here. And I don't know if I don't think I even have the evolved one on uh, something even on something much bigger than what I got here. I don't think I actually do, ever did uh, make something like that, but what I got is a clear enough example. It still does the same thing. It's just I made these wires look a little neater. And this here, we got a daisy chain of three, which I will show you. And this again is your same shift register I just showed you. This is what the packaging looks like. It's a dip package. Uh, the dip package is all I know it's called. Okay, it's pl due to plastic, I guess. Plastic integration of the circuits. Uh, I'm still quite not too sure with that, but anyway, they call it a dip package. That's all I know. Now, what we'll do is we're going to put this little lightning rod back here, and we're going to go here. Now, this here shows you my one single layout of a single shift register, and we're going to be concerned with the pin 14, which is yellow. We want the pin 12, which is a blue wire. And we want the pin 11, which is another blue wire. These guys eventually go to the inputs of the uh, of the Raspberry Pi. And on the next example, these are the pins here that we're going to be using. Okay, but on the next example, I'll show you the pins we're going to be using. Because this diagram might be a little bit small. This is just what's happening with the Raspberry Pi. But we will talk about this. Let me put that little guy there do that there we go this here is a two shift register now if you see where I did a not a mistake but just a messed up kind of a job I got the yellow over top of the blue when I could have just daisy chained it nice and neatly like the way I did the other three so take a note of that okay because after I drew this picture I realized I wish I had a, did it like I did with number three and the example that you saw a tiny example before so this is how I got this laid out to go to the Raspberry Pi. What's happening here is you got 12, you got 14 going into this shift register's output, the first one. It's got its outputs going in there. Then you got number 12 going to number 12 of this shift register. And you got number 11 that's going to a number 11 to this shift register. And then what is happening here is you need the output to finally reach here. So you gotta have a, uh, you gotta have another number 11 and another 12. That's what you gotta have here eventually. So you got the one here going here and then you got this one here, then you got that one there and you got these two. That way you, you got the, all the shift registers lit up like this so far. Now we're gonna get out the next image, put this little guy over here for a minute. This is the third uh, sh uh, shift register. We're just going to kind of go like this so I can 
turn the lightning bolt around so I can at least point a lot easier. This here is your VCC. See how the shift register is facing you in the right way? It's yes, it's facing you the right way. You see that? This is your VCC. This is your uh, ground, which is number eight. And this is number nine, that where your output goes to your other shift registers. This is number nine. And this is number 10, that's called your master. I, I'm just gonna call it a master reset. That's some people call it that. So number 10 is gonna be master reset. And then you got your 12, 11, and you got your 13, your enable, your, your output enabled. When it's high, the output goes low. That's why it's gonna be on a negative rail. And then we got our VCC, like I said, and all the other shift registers are actually the same. They got their own little wire set up exactly the same way, nothing changes. Now this here does the same thing again. We got a pin 14 that's going to this shift register's output. Then we got a pin 14 on this shift register going to this shift register's output. And then after that, we got the make pin 14 talk to this part here to go into the Raspberry Pi. And then uh, we got uh, number 12. That's gonna go into this 12. 11 is gonna go into here like this. And then we need to go junction for an, another number another number 12. And then with the, along with the 11 up there and it rides over here. Then we got 11 here and we got the 12 here and it goes back down like this. So actually it daisy changes the whole thing, but I should have made my registers of the two pair I did. I should have put the rod under here, but I didn't think of that at the time until I evolved. But I, I kept the drawing because at least it's a good thing that you might pick up on what I did and capitalize on me too as well. Which is a good thing because the student can beat the teacher and the teacher taught the student something. That's what the teacher wants. And I'm not a teacher though. I'm just teaching what I learned from others on YouTube and I put my own stuff together and it's all my own concentration. I'm not copying anybody here. In fact, I probably won't remember every little detail about these shift registers. Now, as of what goes on inside them, I know there's AND gates, I know it's a micro circuit, that's all I know. That's that's really all I know. I, if you were to ask me to make a shift register, I probably wouldn't even know how. But I know how to make them work. But this here, now shift registers, they're not happy unless they got equilibrium. What that means is, if you're gonna use two shift registers, you gotta use the full two bytes, one byte each of each register, or whatever project you're making, just won't go right. It'll always be an off bit that's flashing like your lights, whatever. They'll be flashing on the left and making wrong signals and stuff. Just the program not working right. Nothing will happen, but just nothing will look pretty. It'll look, just, it'll look crappy. And you don't really want it to look crappy, right? So what you do is you gotta use that even happy number uh, equilibrium. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use what is called eight bits times eight bits times eight bits and what this means is it's 255 times 255 times 255 but remember the, the computer does have a sign bit it really starts from zero to 255 so if you were to count the physical bits there's actually 256 bits and what that actually means is in computer so the computer can appear to be like it's taking away numbers even though it's adding there's a minus one 28 part of the a part of the shift register or an 8-bit number and the plus 127 and that's where that sign bit goes in that's why you get basically a 256 bit number but it only counts up to 255 it only counts up to 255 now the thing is with these registers here these shift registers they're gonna be like uh let's say if i only hooked up an uh, eight leads to this one here and I made a binary counter, it only take about 10 minutes to watch it count to 255 and that's it. If I hook up two of these guys for 16 LEDs, then it takes almost a day and a bit just to watch it count to a 65, 535. I'm just gonna say it like that, it's a big number. It's that number, but I'm not gonna say the word thousand, but you know what I mean. It's 65, 535. Just remember that, that's how high that counts. Now this one here counts into a couple of million, I assume, because I did uh, the bytes are on the 20 are on here on, on my binary tricks. 
So I just forget off by head, off by heart in my head. That's all. But I did figure out the bytes to make the binary tricks work out of a 24-bit shift register. Okay. Now what I what it, like what I said, 256 times 256 times 256. So if you were to make if you were to watch a 24-bit binary counter count, well you'd have to stay up for a, probably a week maybe, unless you wanted to make go across the screen without no sleep and there function to make it pause which a pause is always nice so you can count right it's always good to count Just to see it count that's what the fun is but uh i'd like to do it one day for a science project i just never thought of it but i don't know how i could record that and i can't just say if i did something if i got no proof but i imagine probably it'd take a couple of days but someone should try it if someone's got a camera they can leave on someone can probably try it for me they'll be the first to do it but it's a 24-bit number we're going to be using here okay now, um, due to my sore back, I'm going to try and see if I can hook up all the shift registers because these ones that we're going to use, I want to do it thoroughly. But bending over has been hard because due to a bad fall that I had and I never did heal right and I do hurt once in a while. But I'm going to make the best I can do to, to create this video and make it go to make it understandable and enjoyable. So now that we know what these do, you still got the abbreviations down here of what these guys do so you can actually look at the schematic if you can actually see that because i'm working on a tiny screen because i'm working with obs so i'm seeing a tiny screen here this is my raspberry pi again my pinouts my actual pinouts here which i'm going to be showing you soon so now we're going to move on to the next image okay we're still here at this same kind of abbreviation stuff but there's a couple of noticeable things that are different. Remember how I said that uh, if you got a QA and then you all the way down to QH and it might look different, it might be numbered. Here we go. We got a Q0. We got a Q1 all the way to Q7 that lights up your fun. These are going to light up your lights, like I said. They're going to light up all your fun. Okay, this is your VCC, this is your ground. This is your output you, where you want to put another shift register and I think timers can go there but like I said I'm new to these I'm only playing with LEDs for now. I don't want to fry my stuff because there ain't no undo buttons on here. And then you got your master reset here they call this. And then you, you got your you got your other chips here which all the things are abbreviated over here. So we'll start with Q1 over here. Q1 is a parallel data output. That's part. Of, that's one of your lights, and then Q015. That's this guy right here. So he's right here. I wish they had to put him in breadboard order and stuff, but Q0 is right here. Q1 is right here, and then Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, and Q7. See, they're all your output enabled. That you can have all your fun that you want. Whatever can safely take these shift registers. Mind you, I, I, I'm not clear on all that. So I'm just saying, be cautious. Look up what you can do and what you can't do. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still doing that. I'm, I'm still, still learning these things. And due to a sore back, I haven't been on my pie for about a month and a half. Sitting, sitting forward is hard on me. But I'm really trying to do this video as hard as I can. Now we got your ground. Number eight is your ground. It says there's your ground. And then we got our Q, our Q7. That's our little guy right here. Okay, that's uh, number nine. That's our output. Okay, then we got number 10, our master reset. Okay, and uh, we got our 11 pin. And what's that? This, that's called, we call that uh, shift, reg clock, shift register clock in, input. And then we got our number 12, storage register clock in. They call it that, that's what they call that here, on this schematic here. So what you do is, you just count down from the pins. If, just in case you don't see the pin number on here, you just go 16, 15, 14, 13, whoops. You go 16, 15, 14, 13, which is output enabled, remember? 12, 11, 10, 9, okay? So if you ever want, if you get lost on here, you see one of these little guys for your shift registers, Right away, just go to pin 11 and just go 9, 10, 11. That way you'll know it's this, okay? And then you'll know that 12 is this. 
and 13 is that. So number 12 with the CP, they call that a shift register clock in. And, uh, a storage clock in, sorry. Number 11 is a shift register clock in. So we just gotta just look at the schematics carefully as you do things like I even have to. And your 14, your, your, your 13, like I mentioned, is your output enable pin right here. And then your number 14, is your uh your uh uh, uh what did i say it well it's, again here our serial data input here okay that's what that is that's going to go to your other shift register on pin nine that's going to be helping the daisy chain the shift registers together and that's basically the brain center that controls the shift register but it can't do nothing without its pin and, and pin 11 and 12 pins though it won't do nothing without it It'll, it might be able to think, but that's about it, probably, if it can even do that. Now we're going to move on to the next image. I'll just turn my little lightning bolt around. There we go. We got that turned around over there, my little friend. Now we're going to go like this one here. Now, here is a layout of all the stuff that I've been trying to map up here. Now, what I had done as I took schematics and I might have highlighted them or made ones that I made and put together that I found off the internet that I could actually make it look like part of something that I'm trying to explain. Even here, I'm, I'm trying to explain something right here, which I will explain it all to you. And then we got our diagram of the shift register. Okay, we got our diagram. And these numbers here that you see here, you got a 17 and a 27 and a 22. Don't worry about those because I'm going to show you breadboard uh, numbering, not Broadcom, BCM. You got to use, just change the command from board to Broadcom, and, and, and I got videos that show you how to do that, okay? I do got videos that show you how to do that along what I teach, whatever it is I teach in videos. So, not to worry there. You can always find what it is or find it from anybody else too. But I'm using the actual direct pins, okay? And these direct pins are my 13 uh, on the on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using uh, a 13. Oh boy, I can't even see it there. But I'm using a 13, 15, and 11 on my Raspberry Pi. Now, 15, of course, is yellow. That guy's right there. And I can't see he's so small right here with the things here. But on the next page, you'll see clearly where I got the number. So not to worry. I'm just showing you right now the schematic of what I did. This is color coded still regardless. Just so it's adjacent to these for, for the shifters or pin outputs that you see here that I just showed you. See how I got them all marked? Now, one thing I really want you to pay attention to. It even says it right here. And normally in Python... When you make variables that equal something, sometimes it really doesn't matter which order you put variables in. But for some reason with the shift registers in the Raspberry Pi, Python likes to read from the top or down. There's some commands that have to do that in Python. If you, it'll appear to work, but skip commands if you don't put the commands in the right order. But usually variables don't do that. And values don't really do that too much. I, I've never really encountered that, honestly. But these little values right here, you got to put them in the right order because if you don't, you'll either get the shift registers, they won't turn on, and you think to yourself, I got everything right. I got everything right. I know I do. I know I do. And then you troubleshoot and you realize you got to switch the bits around, the values. You can name the name any thing you want, but when you make your, your variables, it has to be from the top downward. So, when I did it any other way but the way I got it, it wouldn't work. And as soon as I got mine and I said pin 13, pin 15, and pin 11, it, it worked perfect. So if you have trouble making your shift register work and you swear you got it right, please try switching your numbers around, okay? You can name your variables anything you want, but try switching your numbers around. Because Python does get affected with the Raspberry Pi on here. That's really strange, but it does. Okay, on with the show here. This here is our little shift register here. I'm showing the pins here, okay? For the shift register, not for these guys. This is for the Raspberry Pi. These are your actual pins again, but without all the other stuff attached. 
Okay, this is your pin 14. It's, you know, it's facing the right way. This is your pin 12. And this is your pin 11. Right here, okay? This is your pin 11. And you know, you can't see it. This is pin number 10. This is pin 9. This is pin 8. And this here is pin 13. And this here is where you, your lead starts to go. You got Q0 or Q1 all the way to QH or, or Q7, if you want to call it that, right? Okay, all the way down that side, you got the exact adjacent layout. And the same thing with the shift registers. You got them laid out too, exactly like this way. That's your VCC, that's your ground. Every shift register has its own VCC, okay? Now, what's here is these ones here ain't gonna be running the water and the thick of the electricity is like water if you want. The water is going to come in anyway and go through the ground and the positive. As long as there's no shorts, the thing, the shift versions will be fine. You'll just have power going through them doing nothing. But you don't want to attach any other wires on them because it'll affect your bit count. Remember how I told you you need the exact amount of shift registers to make a happy equilibrium? Well, that applies right here. If we're going to use all three of these guys, well, they gotta, they're going to be a glutton. They got to use all that chip, all of it, or it just won't go right. It just I've played with it. It's really weird. But when you want to do binary, it doesn't go right when you have an odd number. Like if I, if I use part of a 16 bit, it won't work right. I've tried it and you got to use the whole shift register or use one only. If you use two, you got to use the whole thing. OK, even to make the lights go back and forth, you have to use the whole shift register. If I want 16 lights, I have to use 16, not 1, not 8. I have to use 16 bits, not 8. And happy shifters like to be happy. They don't like to be this or that. They like to be happy. So you got to keep them as an equilibrium. You use two, you have to use all, all the bits on, on, on each both of them to get the better results on a much happier running program and not so unpredictable. And it won't hurt you or electrocute you. It just... It just dumps up your program and it doesn't look intelligible. So remember that. And this is just the layout right here of a nice giant one right here just by itself, just for something to do to fill up space. Now we're gonna go on to the next image. Now this here is my lovely Raspberry Pi. This is my Raspberry Pi 4. These pins here will be explained. These are 40 pins, okay? 40 pins. And the, see how up here, they count from one, two, three, four. They count this way, side to side. These pins here count the exact same way. And I will show you the, the, the leading pins that we are using to power our shift registers with this Raspberry Pi. But as you notice here, which is great, if you guys want to use this as a screenshot and put it as a, a monitor background, I use mine like that. It's great for have, those that have a Raspberry Pi are just beginning because this is shaped like a breadboard cobbler. This is like a breadboard cobbler, but on the real cobbler, the actual pin strip is not there. It's, it's just uh, the, 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 the BCM numbers, the Broadcom numbers like you see here. You don't have this little fancy little metal strip, and I wish you did, but it's okay. This has it, you don't need that, but this is exactly like a breadboard cobbler. It's just it's not blue or red, and it's pixelated on a computer. So this is how this goes. So we're going to show you the next one now. And this here is the main stars of what we want to do with our pins. You see how I got them lit up like this? Okay. We guys want to make sure I'm reading it right. Because it's so tiny to me. We got, we got seven, oh, we got 13, 15 right here. We got 13 right there, and we got 11 right there. That's 11, 13, and 15. 11, 11, 13, and 15. 11, 13, and 15. I was looking at my little red marks by accident. <laughs> Not realizing where I put my arrow. Sorry about that. I'm doing this all live. But remember, see this? 11, 13, and 15. They're color coded like I showed you. Okay. Now we're going to show you where they actually go from from the Raspberry Pi. Look at these little lines here. Don't you see the correlation? These pins here, count the pins down, count the pins down. See the correlation of how the actual live view is of the 
of the Raspberry Pi's 40 pin layout. It's the exact same schematics that they show on a breadboard, so you got everything lined up exactly. That's what's shown here. These are the pins that we are using. Okay? This is your, uh, uh, this is your sir right here. That makes it so I can talk to their shift registers and stuff, and I guess make the shift register be a shift register. And these guys here make the, these uh, guys here make the decision. These guys, this, this tells their shift register to be what it is. I assume, and these other guys here make the shift register function logically. And also, too, that I will mention, shift registers also do make extra inputs uh, on your Raspberry Pi, and other videos will mention that. You can actually use them for extra inputs, but I really don't know what to power them on yet. I, that's safe. I really don't know too much about them to make them act like true inputs. So right now, I use them for logical counting and stuff, and just... LEDs and stuff so far so I'm not doing anything special I'm just learning along but I'm trying to teach you guys that might be new too and maybe it'd be a little bit faster if you find this video by accident Hope, hoping you will because I sure needed help and maybe I can help others too and if whatever I ain't got here there's tons of videos out there about Raspberry and whatever you, you, you just you never know just look out there and look I'm hoping that I'm, I got something that you might want to find too Things I've been looking for that are not out there that I'm even trying to pick up to try and give to you guys in myself. Okay, so this is the actual layout of what that is. Now we're going to move on to the next image. This here is where you start putting your fun. But before we start mentioning any fun, see how right here the, 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 the abbreviations have changed? See how they, they, they call them a, a different name now? They call it MR. S R L S R C L R. Uh, the writing's small to me, so I can't really read it that good. But you see how the abbreviations are different? And now it says Q0, Q1, and the Q7. And you see your VCC still, so you know it's still the same chip. And you've got your number facing the right way from the voltage. It's just that word sideways, so I can explain the, the power and stuff. You got your ground just make sure you, you know those right off the bat you be careful like i said before three or five volts apparently you can go two volts but it won't kick it it won't kick the reset and stuff you have to do three or five i got anyway on the raspberry pi i don't know how high it can go but i'm going with five and that's i think it's hard for high as they go i'm not sure if it does a six but i ain't got a six volt pi anyway i only got a five between five and three so one side of the Raspberry Pi I got is a five volt side and one the other side is for three volts. That's how it works. But uh, this is where all your fun goes. This is the lead right here. It starts at Q0 all the way to Q7 or QA all the way to QH. This is where all your fun goes. All your fun goes there and you can act like extra outputs like I said is at the same time. Like you keep all the bits on and have nothing inside the physical circuit and it'll work perfect as long as you got the bits on and actually you use a high bit number you turn them all on they can act like empty inputs just like your raspberry pi does but if you want to use them for logic they definitely 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 need all the all the shift registers to be as one we're not happy with part of a shift register okay just remember that not even one shift register is happy to do binary on half a bit unless you make it count to half a bit exactly but if you go over that limit and don't make it do the counting it, it looks messed up too so but other than that this is what these are okay but like i said the abbreviations change as you can see now we're going to move on to the next image and this here is my little tiny my little tiny monitor this here believe it or not is only about four inches long i guess it's really really tiny though hey as you can see my breadboard here and look at it's not that that's not much longer than my breadboard it's just a little it's just taller though that's all and uh this is my my uh it's called uh what do we call it here uh long runner this it's not bad you know it's a long runner that's what it's called that's what the name of this little guy is it's a good monitor you can even take it apart and use only the screen if you want i actually took it apart to look at it it's easy to put back together too. It's meant to be open source that way. 
It's a good little monitor. You can actually really connect with it to make it do things. The more you know about electronics, you can actually get into this and open source it. It's really, really phenomenal. I wish I knew that. I wish I could go that far, but I may never get to go that far. But this is, this is what I use for my Raspberry Pi. This here is my Raspberry Pi. I just don't have a thing saying Raspberry Pi. That's just text to show you. This is my case. It's in a black case, okay, just to protect it. But I will show you the open view when we do the live view of the shift registers in my, in my hat before we put it together. We're going to see what goes on to make all the stuff I did. So this is going to be quite an extensive video. I'm going to try and make it as good as I can. I hope that I can help people as well as myself for my own reference. This is my ribbon cable. This here is my cobbler. When I told you about a cobbler, notice how you don't see no number strip here. Uh, I can't get close enough, but these are all the Broadcom numbers here. These are all your Broadcom numbers on both sides. This side of your breadboard is three volts here. It says it, it's just five volts. You get one three volt but you only need a rail, it doesn't matter. Don't think about, oh, I only got one three volt, where do I put the rest? Remember, there's a positive rail that you can go into, okay? And I'm gonna explain that. Everything is gonna go by the rail. Remember I said I'm gonna tell you about the rail? I'm gonna tell you about the rail, okay? Everything rides the rail with me. I do nothing but ride the rail. I, I just go surfing and ride the rail. Remember that, okay? And I'm gonna teach you how to ride the rail when I talk about how I feel about electricity being water. But that will be quite a way, okay? So we're gonna just go like this for now. now. Let me pull my little mouser down like this. Now we're gonna go like this. And look at this. This is my cobbler on a more of a view of how it looks. Now just for demonstration and for my own use, I don't always have my pins close to the holes. I like to be able to see the adjacent lineup with my eyes. Like you see here, I like to be able to see the adjacent clean lineup. And I don't like having spaghetti all over the place. I need cobbler wire. It just it seems to fit like a good, good bridge. Because in between this breadboard, this little gap in between, there's no power. You need a you need a highway to go to to make a connection to the Raspberry Pi to whatever inputs I want to use and stuff like that. And these are my shift register, dedicated shift register inputs and outputs right here. These wires here, I will explain them. These are my dedicated inputs right there, okay? And this here, believe it or not, is pin 14. This is pin 12. And this one's pin 11. See how you can actually see them? It's just that this wire is a little bit bent that way, but it's really in the same kind of side by side hole. It just it, it notched forward, that's all. But you see how it goes? Now this, these guys here, they, these, uh, uh, one of these wires here, I have my buzzards going. So these might be my buzzards here. So I'm not gonna worry about these wires. I, I got my buzzards hooked up. So I, you might see extra wires because I got the buzzards hooked up in the part that you can't see. I had them hooked up. If you watch the videos, they're hooked up. So it's probably one of the buzzard wires. But this here is my actual uh, shift register outputs that are going to go into this, these inputs here. Okay, these are the inputs here. We got uh, we got we got 15. We got 15, 13, 11. I'm just going to say Broadcom. Okay, we're going to say Broadcom. I got 22 for uh, shift register pin 14. I got uh, 27 for pin 12. And I got pin 17 for pin 11. We're just gonna, we're just gonna call it that way for just to, just to be easier because I'm looking at my screen and I just turn my head and stuff and I, I'd rather just go on with the flow here. So what I'm gonna be doing here now is showing you the next step. Uh, I showed you all that and my breadboard cobbler and stuff and my hardcore my cord wire or breadboard wire and you call it now I'll go on to the next image now here's a layout of a of the extended layout of how I use the hat this here acts just as my power energy only this uh, breadboard back here on my raspberry pi and the cobbler this is just my energy hub right here 
This here just sends power to the electronics that I do. That's for my, my shift register hats. Now, I'm not using all five of these shift registers. I don't have enough wire. I have enough LEDs. But I don't have enough breadboard or wire, and not nearly enough. So these guys are not being used, but the power still runs freely, freely through them. But they're not doing anything, and it don't matter if the power's going through them. All that matters is that we got these guys here working. All, uh, all in this rat nest here. Yeah, you can't really see that good, but you will see it better in the next image. So we'll, now we'll move on to the next image. Now this image here shows the same view, it shows a, uh, a vertical view of looking down at it. You still see it looks like a rat nest, but, but uh, on, this, on this one here, I don't think I had to demonstrate it. That I wanted to show you how it lays out, but I will demonstrate that when I show you how to build this. All right, we're a long way from doing that yet. But this is the actual layout of what I got. You see this little wire right here? It's jumping from a negative that's gonna go to this negative here. I don't need to bridge across. I just need to bridge across here from the Raspberry Pi. And then this wire here will take over and actually power the ground to the shift registers at the same time. So this here is gonna be uh, transferring electricity much like a a water pipe transfers water into parts of the cities and stuff. But like I said, we'll get to the water part in a while. But right now we got, this is what my layout is here, okay? And this wire here might be for one of my buzzards, I, or something like that. I forget where I had this going because of the picture where I got here, this long wire here, the one that's flying across here. But we're not dealing with that really right now, but we're just gonna, I did want to show you this little rail here because we're, when I said jumping around the rails, Everything is done by the rails. Everything is done by the rails for me. Okay. Now the only things that don't ever get done by the rail is when I need individual power from the actual positive inputs of my LEDs that I'm driving here. They're not in a positive part of uh, any rail, okay? Sometimes they got to work independent. But the catch is these 220 ohm 24 to 20 ohm resistors here they're in a negative power rail so when these guys get power when these guys do current the shift the, the resistors will protect the leads from frying that's why i have to have these these resistors in here to protect the leads from frying now if i want to use a higher value resistor i can but the leads will be the leads will be a little bit dimmer if i use the higher value so they say 220 is a happy number, so I'm going to use 220 as the happy number, but you can go higher, but I wouldn't want to go lower. Apparently, you can go as low as 120, but I, I, I don't want to do that. It'll make your lead speed up and burn out faster. The more power you put into something, the faster it'll burn out. Even if it can't, even if it's safe, it'll just, it's, the, the, spot, the lifespan of it will speed up. So I'm just going with a bright 220, nothing higher. I mean, nothing lower. Uh, if I want to make them last forever, maybe I could put like a thousand on there, a thousand ohm, K ohm resistor and really see it go dim probably. But, down, but these are my happy little shifter, I mean uh, resistors here. I got 24 of them. And these little tiny graph lighting right here, they're all LEDs. All the pins are really, really super close here that I got going to their outputs and their shift registers, okay? That's how I got these guys going, all right? That's what we're going to look like when we do start the build, all right? Now we're going to go to the next picture here. And these, oops, before I go, these are my buzzards. Don't worry about these. These are not part of my plan for teaching. These are my buzzards. They were, what, they were in my last video. You'll see them. But they're there. But they're, they're not being talked about here, though. Now we'll move on to the next, pic, next image. Now, just to show you a, a pictorial view, this is actually counting a binary number. Uh, uh, what number is it? Let's see what the number is. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I can't even think off the bat right now. I'm trying to count back and forth here. But I want to get on with the video, really. But count this number up if you want. You can tell me what it is. But this is what these... Uh, Shift registers look like here with the hat and the lights on. I just, the account didn't go to this bar graph yet, that's all. But this is 10 LEDs on here. 
It's a tin lead bar graph. I got another one with my Raspberry Pi kit recently. I just never attached it yet. I'll, pr I'll probably do that someday to make it do something really wild stuff. I just never attached it yet because I want to get into soldering. After I do this video, I'm mean, going to definitely teach myself how to solder. I need to change my career up for a bit. Now it's time to solder and you guys will watch me do that. But this is what I do with my hat, okay? My Raspberry Pi 4 hat that I made prototyping on a breadboard. Now we're going to just go like this. Pull this down, I can go like this now. This is a straight on look of uh, not a binary count, it's just a shift register that I used. I had to do uh, 24, 24 numbers out between 0 and 9, or as long as it's a number, you can make one set beyond and one set be off to make a pattern. I used, I had to make a 24 bit pattern for these, and it took a couple of weeks to make the lights do what I wanted to do. I will publish the program probably in a YouTube video in the future on how you want to make this. Once you learn how to do this, you might want to make this bar graph thing work. But you got to have the materials and stuff like that to really appreciate it. Okay? And just kind of set it up neat like me. Have your lights actually spaced one hole apart. That way they won't be cramming into each other like bad teeth and sticking up and sticking out. Make them jump across the divisor in your breadboard and they'll fit so much better. And that way you can have your wiring behind your lights, not in front of your action. If you want to have it looking down, I got my shift, I got my, my, uh, my, uh, my 220 ohm resistors down here. The negative rail is acting like their power. I, if I had to do it the other way, it would have looked ugly. So I did it this way, I ride off the rail. I ride off the rail whenever I can, since I can't hear it because it's got individual out inputs to the Raspberry Pi and the shift registers. All these go to the shift registers. The Raspberry Pi manipulates Python to do all this. Okay? Just remember that, okay? Everything I'm doing is programming in electronics breadboarding. So I'm, I'm kind of doing a little two things at the same time, like a rock star here. Let's all go like a rock star. I know I want to. Now this here is like that. Now we're going to go down to here, and uh, anything else do I have here? I'm going to say I will get on with the video and see what happens. This here is my Raspberry Pi's breadboards. This is my breadboards to my lights here, my big three breadboards. This is my single... Uh, uh, the first the pie hat that I made it's all by itself this one right here it's all by itself this breadboard right here is all by itself and the one back here is just my energy and what this is if you look at it it looks not intimidating at all there's no wires on there just my resistors my 24 220 ohm resistors two buzzards and we got seven leads on this side on the right and we got seven leads on this side and we got a tin here that makes 24. this little light strip right here that makes there's 10 leads in here it's called a, gra a graph bar led graph bar so there's only 10 leads in here but that actually fits 10 resistors very really, really cramped together as you can notice right here you see those cramped resistors they're nice and cramped in there and then these guys here and all these resistors here are gonna run off the negative rail. As you can see, they're running off the negative rail. I do everything by the rail, everything. The so shift registers, breadboard. Again, I do everything by the rail. This here has got a wire that's gonna transfer electricity from the, from the Raspberry Pi to here, jump all the way down to here. And I can use other wires if I wanna put another negative here to be a ground for negative here, but I usually like to use the closest source possible if I'm going to connect to the other breadboard. I need to put my ground right here where the energy hub is only. A Raspberry Pi is an energy hub and it's uh, only an energy hub and a memory for my computer. This is the inside of my Pi. As you can see, my little heat sinks are not the best. They're, I put them in there as straight as I could, but they go crooked anyway. So that's the inside of my Pi right there. And that's a little ribbon cable that's attached to the actual pin socket I showed you in the diagrams. A 40 pin 
the 40 pin socket is what that is for all the GPIOs. Instead of putting physical pins in there and taking a chance of breaking things, that's when I use my ribbon cable and that blue collar. That blue collar, I wouldn't live without it. It's got everything I need on there. And I'm going to explain how we're going to be using it with these uh, shift registers. And as you can see back there, they're my new ports that I'm going to be using. They're going to be my, my 22, 27, and 17. And then these guys here, this, this is 20, this is 20, this is 22, this is 27, this middle pin 27, this is 17. So we got 11, we got 11, 13, and 15. The, the, the shift register is actually going to go on to the actual physical pin of pin 15 here. And then we got 13 and 11. Okay, that's the actual physical pins. In Broadcom, it's, it's 22, 27, and 17, okay? That's in Broadcom, but we're not using Broadcom fashion. We're using board fashion here. I'm using the board fashion is what I'm using. But this is how my layout is so far. And then we'll get into how we're gonna hook the, the stars where show up of our show is these shift registers. These, we're gonna use only three. They're eight bits each, like I told you. They're one byte. They're 255, but they really count from zero to 255. So it's 255 times 255 times 255. And if I was used all five, it'd be times 55 times 55. That's a real big number. <laughs> a super tremendous number if I was gonna use all those. But we're only gonna use three for my little binary counter or my little LEDs, which is 24. Exactly 24 can fit along three shift registers. As long as I don't add any outputs to these guys here, the, the power can run freely through them without any damaging them at all. They're just there in case I want to use them down the road. This is my this is my uh, my shift register hat only, or to put a little timer here I want, or whatever else can fit with with these shift registers. I want to use a timer to make a digital clock. I'm gonna put a timer here somewhere. But this is all I want to do right here. Use this for a breadboard hat. And as far as shift registers go, I probably, when I do get soldering, you know, if I become good at it, I'm not going to use these to put on a printed board because I only got five. They're going to stay on a breadboard all their life, pretty much. That way I can do other things with them until I really want to do something with them if I, if I decide to. But this is my layout. This is my Raspberry Pi fan. As you can see, that's the case. That's its case. Okay, and nothing really much to it, is there? But a lot goes into it, though, after you're done. It like there's much to it, but a lot does go in it. But this here is my actual layout of my breadboards, the way I have them. If you can see that, that's my actual layout. That's my new actual layout. And uh, I'll bring you to the water concept at the very end of the video to explain what made me want to do this. And uh, the thought I have be electricity being like water, but we'll get to that. But we're gonna first learn how to hook these shift registers up and have all kinds of fun there. So stay tuned. All right, all right. Now the time has come to learn how to hook these shift registers up to a Raspberry Pi. But before we learn, before we can actually hook them up to the Raspberry Pi. We should really take a good look, even though they don't focus here. But this H, the 74HC595 has to be facing you directly, correctly, okay? Facing you, just like in my diagrams. There's a little notch right here that you, I, I don't know if you can see it, because I'm looking through a tiny GoPro camera here. There's a little tiny notch here. These little bright circles here, as you can see, have nothing to do with it. That's not the direction of the shift registers. Remember my VCC right here? This is the direction I want. Because everything is going to go from from right to left in the actual nature of the shift register. Now if you turn any of these shift registers around in the wrong way, chances are you're going to burn them out because you'll forget which one, which way is which. Keep the numbers facing you correctly, okay? Keep them correctly facing you like you're, you're looking at your computer screen right now. Keep all these numbers that are on the shift register correctly facing you. 
I wonder if I can get one to go in, but the camera don't like the zoom. It really doesn't, okay? So uh, we're gonna take a quick run over this thing. Remember I told you on the diagram? This is your VCC. This is your ground. This is another VCC for this shift register. This is the ground. This is another VCC for this shift register. This is its ground. This is another VCC separate. Like the there's and this is its ground. And this is another VCC. And this is its ground. And each of these shift registers also has its own output enabled. When high, it goes low. That's what this is designed to do. What its actual internal purpose is, I just let the chip figure it out. Like I said, I don't really know what's going on inside these chips. I'm still new to them. I just know how to make them work with LEDs. And I also did make them work with an LCD, and that was neat. It's only got a, it's got a 16 thing uh, uh, LCD display on it. Only 16 characters can fit on it. So at least I can fit up to two bytes of a, of two shift registers each to make it look nice to make an LCD. But I made an 8-bit nip, nip counter only so far. That's in two of my videos actually. I made an 8-bit counter out of an LCD. Those little LCD things. Yeah, it's actually in my video. Now we got this master reset. Each one of these shifters also has its own master reset or clock reset. Okay. Now the 11 and the, the pin 14s and stuff like that. We are gonna install, and I will I will I will place the outputs to the Raspberry Pi last, so I can actually show you without too much of a rat's nest. And then we're gonna take it over to the Pi and I'm gonna show you the exact pins I'm using toward the Pi to on these two. That way you can see what's going on. All right, so hang tight. All right, guys, it's time for a reality check. Yep, it's time to get a little bit sophisticated. And as you can see, these little wires that we're gonna start off with, Mm, yeah, the wires, yeah. You saw this without the wires, but now we're gonna learn how to build this contraption. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna think of this as in layers. We're gonna look at the small picture before we get into the bigger picture. We're gonna think of what we're gonna look at here as in layers. At, uh, at the end of this lesson, I will show you what the breadboard cobbler wire looks like, I, even though I didn't show you putting it in, but it's easy enough to put it in. All you gotta do is follow my demonstration and it pokes in pretty easy. But what I did is for the first layer, I laid out my shift registers the way I needed to lay them out, read how they go, made sure the numbers are facing me, facing you like you see, and then I put my rods in. That way I can count my pins a lot easier knowing this is pin 16, right away off the bat, where my first lead will go would be Q0 or QA, right, pin 15. Then you got 14 for your data pin, your cert pin, and then you got your uh, your input enable pin set to high, high, goes low when it's set to high. And then you got your master reset or the clock reset right pin right here. Okay, and then you can go automatically, this is 10, the next one's 9. You know where your output is. You got 13 right here, you know you got your 12 right here where your pins are going to go that I'm going to talk about, 12 and 11 on each shift register. So you see how what I did with the first layer and the second layer? I look at the small picture first before I can get to the big avenue. I want that big picture, but you gotta look at the small picture and frame in, a, in a different layers, different frames if you even wanna call it that. But this is different little small frames of mine doing in layers, you can do this. Now we're gonna take our real first little yellow wire here and we're gonna, we're gonna go right into pin 14 here. We're gonna go to the bottom here. That way, that way I can see what I'm doing. And then, and we, that way, not only that, but I can also add more wiring that I need. Let's see how we're in pin 14 right here. That's pin 14, remember 16, and then 15 and then 14. Now we're gonna go here into this output here on this other, whoops, we're gonna, we're gonna do, I'm going the wrong way here, sorry. I'm doing all five, I don't want to do five. We're only doing three. We're only doing three, okay? One, two, three. I don't want to do the wrong register by accident. I'm not doing all five, I'm only doing three. So we're gonna start with this last one first. 
to make a daisy chain. I always start from your last shifter as the first, whatever you're gonna use. I'm using three. I almost forgot to mention that too. I'm using three, so I'm going one, two, three. Then I'm gonna use this. I'll put that back here. See so how I got my pin 14 the same? But I'm only using three shift registers, I'm not using five. Okay, so I'm looking through the camera most of the time doing this. But this here is like this. Now I'm gonna go to this output on pin nine. Right away, you know off the bat, that's pin nine. See that? That way, right off the bat, you know it's pin nine. Okay? You got that pin 14 and you got pin nine. You see the red pin 10 there? You know you're right off the bat when you do that. Just carefully look at your holes, check twice, check two or three times if you have to. Now this one here will go to this pin 14. I want to make sure I'm in the camera. Hope I am. Okay, we're gonna make sure I'm in the camera. See how this one's in? It's pin 14 now. See that? I'm wiggling the wire. That's in its pin 14. Now this one's gonna go in the output of the next shift register, our last one that we got, or our very first one that's gonna be counting. But we got something like this. We got this guy coming out of pin 14, we're going into this input here on this output, and then this guy here is gonna take out of this output and go in, out of here, out of this output, that one that's called an output, your other Q7 or or the other Q, yeah, I think Q7 or, what was that, Q7, yeah, they call that one Q7 and they call the other one Q7 too. So that's right, so two Q7s or two Q8, two QHs, whatever, whatever they want to number it as, like I showed you. But this is how you got your thing here, okay? Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna put our blue ones on, okay? Our blue ones for, 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 for 12 and 11, so we're all, we're, I just want to make sure we're all hooked up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hook to any outputs here yet. It'll make it a lot easier to install the hack to our lights, okay, and to our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to do it that way. We'll put the outputs in last for the Raspberry Pi, okay? So we'll work on this for now and we'll show you. So we're going to go to pin 12, which is right after the 13, okay? You see that? Can you see that? That's like that, okay? That's pin 12 right there. That first blue wire is pin 12. And it's gonna go into its pin 12 on the next shift register. See if I can get it in there. See how it goes like, see how it goes to another pin 12? See that? See that? See that? Now here's where the fun gets a little bit complicated, but it's easy to remember. We want one more pin 12. One more pin 12 is gonna go over here because it has to daisy chain to the next shift register okay so we're just going to make sure i get it in there so i'll make sure i'm on the camera come on get in there come on get in there well you don't want to go in that hole do you well you're all bent that's why there we go now see that, how I got a pin 12 over top of that pin 12? You see that after the pin 13 on the next shift register? First one's got one, this one's got two. Think of it as like a subway. You got an escalator or stairs to go onto the second floor. You want to go to this subway now. Now this plugs into that pin 12. You see what's going on? See that, there's a pin 12 there. There's a pin 12 there, and there's two and there's two pin 12s, okay? And there's that one pin 12 that's here before I put the other one in for its output to the Raspberry Pi, so there'll be two there eventually, okay? But we're gonna do this in steps. Remember I told you that? Now we're, we're gonna take another blue wire. Now we're gonna go to 11. We're gonna go right to 11, we're gonna squish it in the same place because it'll make it easier to pack, okay? Now this is 11. You see a number 11 just before 10? See that? That red line and you see 10 and then you see 11 me wiggling it? That's 11. Okay, that's on the, that's on the actual shift register 11, okay? Now what we're gonna do 
is we're going to go to this 11 down here to daisy chain to this to this shift, shift register okay shall we daisy chain in there see that we got the number 11 in there and it's just before the number the pin number 10 okay now we're going to take another pin we're going to go into this 11 again just like we did with 12. See how it's in this number 11 now? Just like number 12, there's two number 12s and there's two number 11s on this second shift register. Now we're gonna put this other 11 on that we got in my hand here, this number 11 here, we're gonna be putting it right here. Now see that, the, the same number 11 before the number 10? Now we're not gonna add the outputs here yet. There's little outputs here I'm gonna grab my little tweezers or my clippers, whatever you want to call these little things. Let's see how I got 12 and 11. Well, I got the pin, I, I got the extra output for pin 14 to the Raspberry Pi, and I got two of these for pin 11 and 12. So eventually, there will be two 11s on here and one 14, okay? But we're gonna leave those off for now, okay? We're just gonna, I'm gonna put that 14 back on when we hook up our actual Raspberry Pi. It'll make the hat a lot easier to put together. So uh, let me get my stuff together and I will we'll get right back to this. Well, here's another reality check for you guys. Look at all these wonderful carnival wires we're going to be using to hook up our 24 LEDs. And now I got more than 24 wires here, but I wanted to sort them all out so I could have them all ready. It's a good idea to keep them all ready. Now, every time you buy a Raspberry kit or any kind of electronic kit that comes with these wires, they're always carnival wires. It doesn't matter what color they are. They still produce the same voltage. So they're all safe to use. It's just that they're carnival wires, but they must be for a good reason because I use them to sort the things out I want to do with my breadboard. That way they make a good, a good color assortment. And we're going to use that approach when we light up our LEDs which are right over here, okay? We're gonna put all that carnival mess on these LEDs right here. And this is our little shift registers. And now what I wanna do is I did it off camera. I thought I'd raise these ones up here. This, 11, this 12 and 11 pin, I wanted to raise that up so you guys could at least see that. See that, How you, I, I made a gap in between. But you can put them as close together as long as long as they're on the same hole line of, of the other of the other pin 12 and 11. Okay, so I just did that here and right here I didn't put any inputs. I didn't put a pin 14 here. I only got one pin 12 and one pin 11. No outputs that go to the Raspberry Pi. No 12, no 11. Just these two guys and no 14 yet. That's the last one that goes into here. 14's already been daisy chained into here. I'm gonna hook the outputs up last. That way it's a lot easier to bring it to the pie after I'm done with the actual hooks up, hookups with the LEDs. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go through this. So I'm gonna use my shortest wire first. Okay, since, I, since I'm going from uh, right to left, I'm going from right to left here, right all the way to left. Okay, now just like before, we're gonna put this in the pin 15. Well, I explained it on the thing. That's where all the fun starts to go. See that? See right there, pin 15? That's where all the fun starts to go. And now all we want to do is you got to go to the very first lead. We're going to put that down for a minute. Pick this up as close as I can. And we're going to drag this over here. And we're going to go to the very, very first lead. Okay, you can, I'm trying to make it so you can see it. Yeah, you see the first lead? You see that? That's the very first lead to Q0, okay? On the very first shift register that we're playing with. That's called Q0, okay? Or QA, if you want to call it that. This is QA right here, okay? We're going to point that there. This is QA right here. This LED is QA. This LED is QA, all right? 
And let me get my wire. I dropped on the ground. Okay, we got another little white one here that we're gonna use. It's gonna go in the Q1. Okay. We're gonna put that in the Q1. That's gonna go right here. We're gonna put it right here. Just so we know what we're doing, okay? See how that's gonna be Q1? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, that's Q1 there. See how that's Q1? That's called Q1 on that side, okay? That's Q1. Now we're gonna put Q1 into the next thing over. See that? Now we got Q0, Q1, okay? Q0, Q1. Now we're gonna go again with Q2, but we're gonna, just do not crowd them still together. We're gonna go on this kind of a pattern here. We're still on the same line. We're still on the same line, but see how I got it kind of diagonal? Just so I can make it so they don't crowd together so much, and it's much easier to do. So now this is gonna be Q2. Q2 is gonna actually go in here. See Q2, zero, one, two, okay? Even though it's three there, that counts as zero. Zero, one, two, remember that, okay? All right? Q0 is always in pin 15. Okay, and then Q1 is always in Q1 and Q2, okay? Now we're going to go to Q1, 2, 3. We went to Q3. It's getting hard to show you here, but see, uh, See how I got it like that? Okay, I'm doing things every other diagonal here. Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, okay? We're gonna do is the tweezers here. Q1, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. Now we're gonna go into Q4. Okay, Q4, you can hardly see it though. You see it wiggle the Q4? Now I gotta take this and go under here. Go to Q4. That's Q4 right there. Okay, well let's count it again so you know. Zero. We got zero, one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna go to Q5. We're in Q5 of the shift register. See that? I'm doing it down at the bottom so you can see what I'm plugging into. Okay? In fact, we'll even put Q0 up here if you want. Okay? That way you can see exactly what's happening. Okay? You can see exactly what's happening. You see that? You can see what's happening? I wish I could put this a little bit closer. But the wires ain't long enough. But if you look on the map, you'll see what I'm doing, especially with these lights. Now you can see them perfect. Now I gotta go for my next wires that are a different color, but they're the same size. We're gonna use green, because I only got a couple of red, so we're gonna use green, but they're the same size wires that we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna go like this for the final pins. We got pin... How many pins do we got? We got pin six, okay? This is gonna be Q6, okay? Or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, yep. This is gonna be Q6. First green wire. And 
And if I got my leads on every two holes, okay? Every other two holes is where I got my leads. So that's why I'm looking at so quick to be able to do this, okay? But now we got, now we got our, we got Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6. And Q7, we'll start off here. We've got to put the last one in the Q7. We're going to use a red, okay? Oh, another green. I got another green. We're going to use another green for Q7. Make sure I'm on Q7. Q7 is going to start at the LEDs, okay? Because we're at zero at the beginning, so Q7. Is definitely going to start the LED at the LEDs. I'm going to make sure I'm putting it on the right thing. Make sure. see when you got a little LED bar it's hard to really notice if you're got it in the right hole or not that's what I'm not sure it's hard to see when you're looking down like that there we go now I got Now we got here, we got Q0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? Now here's where these guys are going to start cramming together. Now I got to go through this chip here. On the next chip first, I start at Q0. I'm going to raise it up to the top too like I did the others. With a green wire, keep going with green. Now let's reach over this. Now what I think I want to happen is, is we're going to go into here. Because they're all so close together. Okay, all these little, this LED bar graph is really, really close together as you can see. that now we're going to take uh, the last two that we got in red and we're going to follow the same fashion now we're going to go into Q1 we're going to go to the very end so you see what's happening okay see how I'm in the Q1 See how I'm actually in the Q1 there? If you can actually see it there, see that on the next shift register? I already did zero on that on the register, now I'm in the Q1. Now what that's gonna do here is that is gonna go to here. See how I'm putting it side by side? That's a zero, that's a one, okay? That's Q0, Q1. I got them exactly side by side. So as if they're mirrored, okay? All right, no, not mirrored. I mean, as if they're going, as if it's the same exact same shift register, but it'll be equal number of wires and everything. Now we'll use another red one for Q2. Q2 is going to go in here. Okay. Q2 is in there. Q2. If I can film it, if you can see it, see the little wires. On the on the second shift register, the little red wires. I got Q1 and Q2 so far, and zero is actually the last pin, the very first pin for the second pin for that the graph bar. This is this is Q0, Q1, Q2. Okay. Okay, we need uh, bigger ones now. It looks like we got yellow ones. Okay, now I can use yellow if I want. Same size, yellow, good. So now we're gonna go like this 
for Q3. That's Q3, okay? It's hard to show it really on here because I gotta bend the wires around, but see what I'm doing? I'll show you the complete thing after what you can't see too clear here. But I want to see, I want you to see me po poking the wires and at least the lights, if anything. Now see this here, it goes here. That's, that's Q4, okay? It's gonna be Q4. And now we're going on to Q5. And this is gonna be Q5. Now we're going on to Q6. That's Q6. Now the last one of this year, first year, second one. Okay, remember we, when we first hook the lights up, you start from the very first shift register to your far right, then you start hooking up. And when you do your inputs to the shift register, you always start from your far left. Remember that, okay? That's for when you want your shift registers to fire. So now we want this one here. Getting crammed in there. It's getting pretty crammed. Okay, we got that for for here. You know, we got the final pin in there for, for Q7. And Q7 is going to go right there. Okay, that's going to be Q7. Q7. Okay. Now we got to, the last first shift register we got to do. Okay. And which other ones do we want to use for that? We're going to use... We'll use these white ones, I guess. Well, I got a couple more red ones. Yeah, we'll use more red ones here. Okay, we're gonna go into this Q0 now, okay? We're gonna go up here like I did before, right here for this Q0, so you can see where it is, okay? You can go closest to the shift register you want here, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes for anybody that's new like I was, and still am, <laughs> pretty much. But this here is like this. Now what we wanna do with this actual third reg shift register is continue on like we were. Okay, I want to make sure I'm on that bar graph that I should be, and I'm on the bar graph. It's still carrying on. This is the new Q0, but with all the shift registers together, it'll lock like one, okay? We just got to use a different kind of wiring, as you can see. Look at that taller wire. <laughs> I get what I get, right? Sometimes it is what it is, okay? It just, things are what they are. Now we're gonna go into here to Q1 on this same shift register out to here so at least you can see what's going on. See that, at least you can see what's going on. If I even got my, there we go. At least you see, at least you can see what's going on here, okay? And then we're gonna go to this light. Make sure that I'm gonna hit the right light. There we go. That's Q0, that's gonna be Q1. That's Q1. This is Q0 to this shift register, okay? Keep the numbers constantly flowing in order, okay? Constantly. And you won't go wrong. If, you're, if you got enough wire, it might even be a good idea to count how many colors per shift register you'll want to make it even easier. With me, I'm just using any color available. I'm not really lining up how many colors go to which shift registers because I'm not even sure if I even have enough of the colors I need in the first place. You might always not have that a bit, that that fashion, which I currently don't. But now we're in uh, Q2, okay? This is Q2. Now we're gonna go to Q3. We go to Q3 and go like this. And now we gotta go to Q4. Now we're going to go back to these, we're long white wires again, we might as well, right? I should have used them before, but I just keep everything in a color. That way at least I, I know what I'm doing here. So it doesn't matter which color you pick. You don't have to be that dainty, but just watch where you're putting your stuff. Okay. 
So we got that one there and that one. Okay, that's in. That's in uh, one, two, three, four. Now we got a Q5 to work with. Put this in Q on Q5, and then we'll put Q5 right here. And then we got Q6. Q6. Q6 will go here. Okay. That's Q6 there. See? Q6 right there. Right there is Q6 for this last shift register, okay? Now we've got the very last wire to plug in, which is Q7 on the very last shift register. The very far one on the left, okay? Remember we work from right to left with hook up the shift to hook up the LEDs. And it's from right, left to right to hook this shift register's inputs up. Like I, we showed you already. Okay, now this is all set up. This is all set up. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna take a good look at it in a minute just to give my back a little bit of a break. And then we're gonna explain the power and the water effect, okay? But I'm not gonna hook up anything to do with the buzzards. They were another assignment altogether. We're gonna leave the buzzards out of this, okay? Those big black things, we're not gonna do those, all right? But if you want me to do them, I will do them, and I'll do them in a separate video, or show you a continuing video of these hooked up and doing it, whatever. But we're only gonna, we're gonna leave out the buzzards for now, all right? Just to give you the idea of how to use these shift registers. Buzzards can always wait, they're the easiest things to do anyway. But we're just going to show you how to do all this. So I'm just going to take a bit of a break. And I'll be right back. Alright, we're almost done. Okay, we're almost done, alright? Now what we're going to do to make things easier before we hook up our power. To our actual whole entire thing. We're going to take this pin 14. This yellow wire. This is going to be the last output of it to go to the Raspberry Pi. We had already daisy chained the last shift register up to the very far right. Now this is getting hard to push close together, but we're gonna raise our camera up a bit. It's just it's gonna have to do because I can't zoom in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the very, very outside of pin 14. Now that's just before 13. Remember before 13? Okay. Now what we're gonna do with this, we're gonna put it in the consecutive pin. We're going to put it right inside here of uh, pin 22 in the Broadcom, right here, okay? We're putting that right into the pin 22 in the Broadcom. I will show you an overhead view in a minute of all these, okay? Now we're going to take pin 12 and put it into its final output. And I'm going to have it so it's kind of upward, so at least you can see what's going on. And it's going to be in its adjacent output and put to the Raspberry Pi and me. Alright, now we got number 11. Number 11, okay? That's also going to go to the Raspberry Pi. That's in pin 17. Number 12 is in pin 27. And, and uh, number number uh, 14 is in pin 22, okay? Or if you want to call it, you can call it like I call it, 15, 13, and 11, okay? All right, just remember that, thir 15, 13, and 11. That's in my, the, the board method that I'm using. But because you might only see the cobbler, we'll just leave that as that. But remember the program I, I showed and probably will show again in this video at the very end, we'll use breadboard method not the Broadcom okay but I will show you instructions to do both on uh, whichever one you want to use and it's up to you which you want to use in the programs that are presented to you through me now we're gonna hook up some power and here's what I want you to do now I want you to imagine that there's that the power is light I mean the water I mean it moves at the speed of light 
It's water that just moves at the speed of light is what electricity is. This is what I want you to imagine it. Okay, now we're gonna turn the wires into hoses. The wires that we need are gonna be turned into hoses. All right? So far, we're gonna need a VCC wire. I gotta put this into my other five volts on here. As soon as I can jam it in there. Okay, I got my five volts there for that guy. Now I can bring this guy over here. And we're gonna power up this shift register with this. We're gonna put this behind here. If you can see that. I'm gonna fly over with the camera anyway. If you can't see it, it doesn't matter. I can't go any closer and I don't got enough room for anything here. Okay, we got this like this. Now we're gonna take our negative wire, our hose, we'll say. This is gonna be our hose. Look for the negative wire that I need. Black wire, ground wire, okay? Negative or ground, okay? See, all right? Now what that's gonna do is, we're gonna fly off the negative rail here on this uh, energy hub that I made. We're gonna fly off the negative, but we're gonna put it nice and, nice and neatly though. There we go. Now that's gonna fly down to the lights. The lights are over here. Has to go here, stupid me. I'm gonna go like this and put that side by side like that. Now what I did, I'll have to explain it with the camera looking down down at it though, because it's hard to see it on this angle with all the wires in the way. In the way. Now we got the water all hooked up and everything. We got our water, our water all hooked up and stuff. Everything's all hooked up with the water everything okay everything is hooked up with the water now all we gotta do now is take a look at the water and everything to make sure everything's all hooked up right the hoses everything okay water when you think of water water this is how I got the hoses. Can you see all that? I, on my power, on my negative rail, I got the I got the ground for the shift resistor jumping off it, and I got the positive on the on the five volt because there is no room to make a little wire. But on the other side, you can see my three volt new wire that I added for the other positive rail not not used yet. I also got a negative wire beside that that you can hardly maybe see. That's right beside that, so I use that as a future jumper. But this is all like water. And like real water, it has to come from somewhere, right? Well, it comes from the wall socket, like the water coming from the ocean. It goes to the turbine. The wall socket goes to my Raspberry Pi to act like a turbine. Then the energy hub and the computer memory tell all this what to do eventually. This here is all powered separately. All right, this is all powered separately. Now, I gotta add power to my lights. Okay, they're the only ones that haven't got power added to it yet. There's no power. I need a negative rail to go to my lights now. Now, if I want, I can, I can jump from here because I'm live to build the one to here. I mean, my, my resistors where my negative bar is right there. I can go live and go here if I want. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jump from there. I'm gonna use the energy hub, okay? I'm gonna use the energy hub ground for the lights. I'm not gonna play leapfrog here. I'd rather not do that. Nothing can happen. But I'd rather use the power from the source to make it do less hard work on the other stuff. It's just. This is just what I feel. So we're gonna see me plug this in here. We need another black wire. And I can use this, so I need one a little longer. I don't think I got black. I'll have to use a blue. I don't got another black, if I, even, if I can even make it fit. Okay, we're gonna go to this negative wire, this negative rail right here on the energy hub, on the five volt side that I got. And then this, just, just reaches. It just reaches. In fact, you know what I might even do? I'm gonna play switcheroo. 
I'm gonna play switcheroo. We're gonna make this one be the negative ground. Negative ground for this to go to this. That's a negative ground right here, right beside that here. That's on the negative ground. Now we're gonna take, we're just gonna use this, okay? I don't, uh, it's good enough anyway, it's just long. We're gonna put that side by side here for demonstration purposes on that same energy bar. Now we're gonna come down to the resistors part right here on this negative. Now the whole thing has basically got power ready to run through it. Okay, we got all kinds of power just ready to run through this thing. Okay, so in a minute, we are just gonna turn it on. Okay, we are gonna make sure that we got nothing missing there. And you're gonna, we're about to see this thing come on, all right? And then we're gonna try our program on it. So we're just gonna go like this. I can move this like this. So at least we can see what's going on. Now remember, I didn't hook up the buzzards, okay? I said that wasn't part of the work and we weren't gonna hook that up. Now I was gonna double check everything to make sure I got everything right. That I got nothing cross-touching or anything. Gotta make sure of that and I got the things I need. I got the wire acting like, like a, a hose going to here. All right, okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn on Mr. Raspberry and hope that he lives. Okay, now see the lights come on at random? We know that they all work because it shows random pattern on there and all the lights didn't turn on, but it doesn't matter. It's just some of the data bits are not clear. Now we just gotta wait for our Raspberry Pi to, to boot up. See it boot up? We wait for it to boot up. Okay, as soon as that little magic punt symbol comes, I can look for a program and we can try to see if this works, all right? And you saw it would be turning on live, okay? <laughs> you saw me turn this on live, right? So now I'm gonna, here's where I'm gonna need my keyboard and I need my mouse. Turn my mouse on. Did I turn it on yet? I think I turned it on. Now I got my keyboard. I'm gonna sit this on my lap and we're gonna do some fun here. I didn't think I turned that on, I thought I did. I'm gonna discover it. There we go. I got, our, I got my mouse on. Now I'm going to open this little uh, folder of mine and we're going to go to uh, 24 bit tricks where's my 24 bit tricks Later, come on with my bit tricks. If I encounter, and that's fine. I thought I already renamed that. I guess I didn't. Here, I did that again. Whoops. Well, I want to rename it. I want to reopen it. Well, I open it. Let's make sure it is my right one. Before I do anything, no, that's not the right one because it's on the wrong pin. It's on the wrong pin set. Okay, it's on the wrong pin set. There we are. I think that's what I want right there. That might be the one I want right there. Make sure my pins are right so I know. Yep, there we are. 13, 15, and 11. Now what's going to happen is we're going to go right down here to make sure I know what uh, index I'm on. So I can fluently show you this and make sure it works. Okay, we're gonna go to binary tricks zero to show you the ordinary binary number counting, okay? Make sure this works. See, okay, it works. 
see how it works. See how our binary counter is actually working. Now I can push control stop since I got the keyboard. I'll push control C to stop to kill the whole entire thing. The pins are low, they're set to dead. Okay, set to off. <laughs> That's not quite a nice thing to say, but see on my screen too that it even counts the ones and zeros, even though it's kind of far away. But it'll even count the ones and zeros. We'll we'll uh, go like this and we'll do it again so you can actually see how it even counts up to the screen. And it tells you how many bytes it is too. You can probably see that or just make it out, but I, the camera I can't reach that over too good. But that's how that's going. Okay, now we're going to show you the different layouts. Okay, we're just going to stop this. Now, close this. Now, what we're going to do, in case you try this, uh, this nice one that's called uh, the flow, the, in, the, the, the binary tricks flow, here's what, here's what will happen when you first run it. We're going to make sure we look at our little thing again. Okay. When you do the binary bits flow example, which is number, which is number four, number four in the index, okay, is what that's going to be. So when we run it, it'll look like it's not going to run right away, okay, but it does. You'll see what I mean. I already made it run. See that? That's called binary bits flow. You see how they're actually flying across the ship register? And you saw me hook this up live with you. I did everything live with you, and everything is what you can't see with the eye in real life. At least it's on the it's on the pinouts of sheets that I did, and everything. So everything I did here is what I did here. All right, this is the this is the actual fun I got to do. This is how the water is powering our little power plant, much like your little uh, hydro towers and your little energy plants. I got an energy hub that's going to another hat on the Raspberry Pi going to this hat here. This is a, a light hat or any kind of a hat I want to make out of this. On my ship register breadboard, that's dedicated only to them. And mind you, like I said, I don't got all five lit up. But as you can see, there's no harm in what they're doing here, okay? Now we're going to show you some more, a little bit of fun. Because you've been a good, good crowd of mine. You've been very, very good. Control C. Okay, now let me take a minute to find this and you'll love it. Patience is always a virtue, right? So we're gonna go back to closing this program and now I wanna look for 24-bit show. Where's my show? Let's make sure I got this right. Okay, you guys are in for a real good treat. Are you ready? In fact, what we're gonna even do, we're even gonna turn out the lights for this guy, okay? We're gonna turn out the lights for you. We're really gonna have some fun here. Okay, are you ready? It's time for some fun. Let's do this. Let's hope that we, let's hope that this runs right. If it doesn't, I'll to, uh, I'll, we'll just watch it anyway. This here is what I told you about the choreograph. I will display this on a Python video and I might not do it in the same video here because it will be a very long video if I do. I'll make it be a thing of its own. But this is the program I will be teaching down the road. If you understand what I did here and you hook this up and you make it work like I did, you even use the same pins. That way if the pin settings that you used, you have to change the difference around inside the Python program. I used to be use my consecutive pins. You'll get out of that error easy enough, okay? If you use your own set of pins, you're welcome to it. I used the 35 and 27, 22 before or something like that when I first was doing this. But now I got my designated pins I'm gonna use all the time. And as you can see, because I'm using an even amount of shift register values, it's flowing really, really nice. And you can use I have parts of a shift register, but you gotta be the next number down and the next number up, just like in my loops, okay? You can't, you gotta make them happy. You gotta make a, a number over top of the next number down and put it in a for loop. 
You can probably even make it count to three as long as you do it that way. If you don't, it's not happy. And if you use all the shift registers, you have to use them all or the lights won't be happy either. So you gotta make everything be a happy equilibrium with your shift registers and then the possibilities are endless. See, I'm not using it right now for inputs to shift registers, which other videos told me and t others tell others that you can. I just never, I'm not that far to know what can go on these shift registers yet, other than LEDs. I used an LCD within the program, but not attached to the shift registers. But they were a part of my program to make it precisely count. And stuff like that, it was showing the results anyway. But this here is connected to lights that are physically connected to these lights. And so far, that's all I know you can do with them. And uh, I'll learn as I go. I've only known them for about a year. And having a sore back, I've been off and on my pie as much as I could. And I'm glad I even got to do this video for you. But I'm so glad I got to accomplish this and you saw it live of me hooking it up. And I, we did it every step of the way together. And I explained how electricity is like water and how you gotta see things in small pictures and then you can get the bigger picture. And then you got the biggest picture of what you see right in front of your eyes. All of a sudden, you got a homemade scientific computer science project. And you did it yourself. And you'll be proud that you actually did it yourself. And you gotta learn from others. I didn't just do this on my own. I did a, I did a lot of this from YouTube. I gotta thank a lot of YouTube guys for helping me do this. Even though this is my own work, I wouldn't have been able to navigate around the ship registers without all those people that taught me. Anybody that's on my channel that you see that I recommend is the people that taught me how to do all this. They taught me how to do all this. Only I put my own things to it and expanded on what they taught me as if I really wanted to go back to school to learn something. And I did it all from my own home with the free power of my own imagination. And my heart had to want it first. Then my mind said, go get it. And I went and got it. And I don't regret it. I don't regret this in the least. So we're just gonna leave this on and watch the whole entire light show. And have a little bit of a whole kabuki good time here. Everything worked right off the bat the way I wanted it to. The only thing I did wrong in this program when I made it, because it was only a demo anyway, I didn't put an interrupt stop vector handler in there to turn the bits off. So I stopped this by control C. The lights will just stay on because I didn't put an error handler in here and because I didn't plan to do on anything with it. But when I do make the original, the professional one for the, for the for video i will put the interrupt handler in there that way you push control c and you know your pins are stopped and this one here i didn't bother to do that even though i did the light show excellent i just figured it's my own program for now until i publish it then i'll put the actual error handler in there but if i push control c which i'll show you when this is done i'm not going to ruin a good light show now all right this light show is going good i can't ruin a good thing now but I'm really hoping that you and you're enjoying this and I hope that it actually helps anybody out that's new at shift registers. If you don't understand what's constantly going in the inside of the shift registers, look around at other videos until you get it through your head on how they work, even if you're not too clear how they work in the insides. As long as you understand what's working on the outside, the insides will take care of themselves. And remember that the shift register I'm using is taking between three and five volts. I only got a three to five volt uh, Raspberry Pi machine, so I'm cranking right on five volts. Apparently two volts doesn't kick the shift register to make it work. It doesn't hurt it, but it doesn't make anything happen. You need between three and five volts. I think I saw one video that says you can go to six point something, but I'm not, I can't even go to six anyway on my Raspberry Pi. That's just, that's just uh, five volts and three volts, so I'm happy with it. It's like one big giant battery, but it's plugged into a wall and it can be unsafe if you do stupid things to it. But this is the end of our show. Now we'll go back to a little bit more lesson on a, a recap of things. One thing I forgot to one thing I forgot to do before I shut down is I'm gonna show you this again. Remember I told you I had no interrupt handler on here? Well this is what you get when you don't have that. See how the lights just froze and none of the inputs turned off? Well, that can be dangerous if you actually put something in the wrong hole and you didn't turn all your pins off when you're troubleshooting something. So it's always good to have an interrupt handler in there to set your pins to off. 
and you'll see it in all my programs I demonstrate and illustrate. I always have an interrupt vector, vector handler in there, okay? It's called an interrupt tr try and accept handler. Uh, I have it so it stops at the keyboard interrupt. So that way if, it get, if a keyboard control C gets interrupted, it knows to shut down the pins when I make the pins shut down and by commands. And as you see here, I got no keyboard interrupt, it just stops the thing abruptly. And that's not really, really good. I like to have a keyboard interrupt on, on all my stuff. But this, is, this was just a demo, just while I was doing something. I was just doing something to learn something, but I didn't plan on trying to publish anything to publish this thing because it took a long time to create. And I'm not sure if you guys will want to write this whole program down. It took a long time to create, but I will publish it on YouTube. And it's actually on GitHub too, if you want to get it. But if anybody can lay this layout exactly like I got, and if they got a kit with a bunch of carnival wires in it, and you got three shift registers, 595 shift registers, H74HC, 595 shift registers, three for 24 bit, one for eight LEDs, two, uh, two for 16 LEDs, and and three shift registers for all 24 LEDs. And because you ain't got room for 24 LEDs on a keyboard, on a, on a breadboard, use what I used, use the LED strip. Use this LED strip like I used, and you won't go wrong. That way you can actually have the equivalency of binary, but doing it that way instead of seeing the nice blue lights all the way along, because I just haven't got enough breadboard, even for 24 little blue LEDs, and it would have been nice. To be able to do that, but I don't got that. I got two little miniature breadboards. I could always make it look funky and do that and put the rest of the LEDs on that, but I'd rather have them nice and close together. But notice how I don't got them jagged like teeth. I don't got any of them jagged like teeth or anything. They're nice and spaced apart and they sit up nice and straight. Nothing's jagged and bent over. I don't like uh, things like that. I like, to, I like my stuff to look uniform and good. I like everything to be consecutive order and color code it even though they're carnival wires i prefer black and white i mean black, I mean black and red i prefer that only i don't i just love black and red wire but you gotta buy that by the spool if you want that but when you get these kits you get carnival wire and that's all there is to it and you get different sizes but this is the final result of my reward or anybody that wants to do this it's a reward it's fun it looks intimidating but you think of everything in layers do what I do. Think of everything in layers. Use cobbler wire or use ordinary wire. Set your pins up first on your shift register. That way it's easier to count and you can just almost do it by eye just like I did. Everything you saw me do, I just couldn't zoom the camera in. I did everything by eye because I had everything already set on the blueprint of the breadboard where those uh, extra pins set them first helped me set them up. I just wish my cutters could cut precise breadboard wiring, but it can't. I tried, but they cut good. I just can't cut the wire precise. I wanted to do it all out of breadboard and except for the lights hanging of the wires. But I wanted to just breadboard my entire shift registers, but I'm not that good at cutting the wire to make it fit precise. I'm trying, but I keep destroying all my breadboard wiring. And at the very end of the video, I'll show you what that looks like since I forgot to do it here. Because I got a little bit of recap I want to do and things like that. But I really hope that you enjoyed yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Uh, uh, the same video to recap. All right, now we got everything all hooked up and everything in our power. Remember I mentioned before that you can actually go to the other jumper, like I said, since this one here is alive down here. This one here is alive. Right here, that's alive. That's coming off this, this cable right here. To go from the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to take my light cord. Instead of having it jump from the energy hub. I'm going to unplug it really quick. See how the lights turn off? Okay, we're going to put it in this negative uh, ground right here. You see what happens, okay? See how it still works? See that? I got, the, I got this acting like water going through here now going through here but my fashion still is you can do it that way like I showed you because I got the other powers there you see that how I got everything hooked to the Raspberry Pi all the energy hub and everything with the cobbler now down here is I thought I'd just do this instead but my fashion is just so I don't put stress on anything in a microscopic world probably 
I'm going to plug it here and we'll put it right directly back into the energy hub where I actually had that. That way it's still, that way it's not relying on too much power going everywhere all at once. That means the water, so I, you know, I don't want, I don't need one hose doing everything. It's nice to have multiple hoses, but this is, this is the final result right here. And what, I'm going to put in a couple of uh, map things on the screen that you can push print screen and use them as your background for your windows uh, screen top. So you can actually refer to them as if the live uh, shift register or menu layout of what you need to re refer to right at hand instead of having to look at a piece, small piece of paper all the time. So we're going to try this out and we're going to do more stuff here. Okay, but before we go, let's just go like this for a minute. And we'll just stop this without pushing the control C. I just didn't push control C, that's all. We are gonna go here and get out of here. Or do I want this here? Yeah, I want, I'm already in the right program. What am I doing? I'm gonna show you leads going backwards. Just so you can see them going backwards. Or call it mirror. Okay, uh, zero, one, two. So we're gonna say, we're gonna say, grab my keyboard. this I'm gonna go control to number two for index and watch this you're gonna count backwards mirror like it's still counting the right way it's still doing the exact same digits in fact just to, just to verify you can you see that binary count that's the actual binary count in the numbers that show you what the, the, the actual numbers are See that in decimal, in the binary? Can you see all that? I made it so it counts with the screen. I just didn't show it in the video because my, my monitor is too small. But this is binary, this is counting in binary backwards. Now watch this. I'm gonna push control C, which I did. Now we're gonna close this a minute. We're gonna call a different index. We're gonna call an index, uh, Index, uh, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, one. You're gonna see the lid, the lids are gonna come out the right way, but they're gonna be inverted. Oh. See that? See how they're counting but inverted? When the lights are off, that means it's counting. And then uh, when the lights are on, it's supposed to be off, right? But I made it so they look like they're, they're, they're on and the off bits are actually ones that are counting. Now what I had done is I also did this. I'm going to stop this a minute. I had also did this. Uh, zero, one, two. I think I used uh, zero, one, two, three. I used three. Now watch this. See how you're counting that same way backwards, mirror, but only inverted? See how I did that? They're counting mirror and inverted. This is on my binary tricks. This is the program that's going to be the bonus at the end of this video that if you want to actually do this. Okay? It's all done in functions. All right? So you can actually, don't have to put it in a list if you don't want. You can actually try each function by itself, but you got to call the function's name after you're done. All right? Instead of calling it in a list, you call it the function's name and you use the parentheses, all right, when you're using the functions by themselves. But you can run it by itself if you want, but just have to not, you just have to exclude the list part of it or run the whole thing and pick your index, all right? But you'll see the program at the very end, and it's already on my uh, YouTube channel if you want to go look for it. It's called 24 bit um, lead binary tricks, all right? That's what it's called, the video. So you can even find it there if you want, but I'm also going to display it again at the end of this video. Alright, so that concludes this part here, and we'll just do a little bit of a recap on the layouts of the 
the maps that I got that you can screen shoot, okay? I'll make it that you can screen shoot those, and that way you'll have everything you need. So this concludes the video for now, and I will let you go, and I'm going to take my time to solder. I want to change my career up a bit, so this is the last video I'm going to do about a Raspberry Pi for a long time until I actually make an electronic hat from a print board that I got. As soon as I make that, I'll do another video, but I'm going to show you guys the first time I learned how to solder. That should be fun. All right, so stay tuned for that one. Okay, bye for now, and uh, keep the notes at the end, okay? Thank you for watching. Now, one thing, after I retook all the wires, after I took all the wires off and everything, and everything's all back to normal, you know, sometimes I might want to use my, uh, my desk for something else. And then having this Raspberry Pi hat of mine that I made all these different separate pieces. Now if I want, I can take this guy away. You know, I can, I can put him aside over here. Whoops. I can put him aside over here. And then I got free space on my table to use for other things like my keyboard. I can put my keyboard right here. Let's see where my keyboard is. You know, I can I can do some computational with my with my cordless keyboard. You know, I can move that this out of the way now. My shifter third uh, hat that I made. There's only the wires on it right here, and the old and the little breadboard cobbler wire is all you see on there. Besides the shift registers and my all my grounds, these are all my ground wires here. Okay. That's what these are here, all my ground wires to the to the each shift register. That's how they look. And I can put this aside like this. And all I'm left with is my Raspberry Pi and its keyboard. And that way I can do other things. Or if I decide that I want to eat, I can move the keyboard away. Okay, this is what I was talking about the core wire. I got it in a case like this. Okay. See those little pieces inside the case. This is what one strand of it looks like. Except that I got pieces the wrong size that are hard to cut with the with the cutters I got. Okay, and I'll show you the cutters I got as soon as I actually put one of these in to show you. Well, these are so easy to put in. Usually. I'll straighten it out. Sometimes when something doesn't go in, you gotta straighten it out. That goes like that, and you can go like that. Then you take this one here, and then you get it. It's hard to do it with one hand. It's hard to do it with one hand though to hold the camera. But I'm trying. We'll go like this just to show you. It is hard it is kinda of hard to poke in. But that's your core wire, but I like to have it flat. <laughs> but it's hard to do it with one hand with the camera, especially when I'm holding it. But it's supposed to lay down like that. Just like my core wire on my, my breadboard does. It's supposed to lay down just like that though. Okay? And these things already come already bent, but if your breadboard's like mine, it's a little stiff. You have to bend them out and put them in, okay? But this is how they come. You can buy spools of it too. We call it core wire or breadboard wiring. Just remember that, okay? It's really hard and it can bend. I'll show you how it bends. See how it bends? You can actually bend it into shape and everything. It's beautiful. You can actually bend it into shape. If I wanted to go like that, I can. And spinning it out of shape is hard. Because it got little creases in it. 
Other than that, though, it's pretty flexible. It bends any way you want. I just haven't got the cutters to actually cut that good. But I got my socks for good. Picks cutters. These work good. The little lid right here, this little tab, this little turning knob here, you actually tighten it down to the wire. You kind of, you kind of look in the wire like this, until you see your gap, and you try and eyeball it to where you only want to take the skin off the wire. You don't want to cut the wire, but this this does both. It can cut if you go down too tight with the with the knob and you tighten it, and you set your gauge. It's a universal gauge. There's no measurement on it. You just touch and feel and hope that you get the best. But it cuts really, really nice. They're called nitpicks, nitpicks, whatever, nitpicks, nitpicks. What they're called. They're really good. Actually, they're worth it. Actually, it is. I can't cut the breadboard precisely, but it cuts it excellent. I just can't cut it good enough to go into the breadboard. And it's not that good yet, but these are great for any type of small electrical electronic wiring. Beautiful. I don't regret buying these. I do regret buying these big ones though. These were definitely the wrong kind I bought. I'm glad they're only like 20 bucks, but they're definitely the wrong kind, but they're good at cutting the wire. At least I can use them for a cutter. But they can't do any real, real small, small electronic gauge wire, which I thought they could, but they cannot do that. But they're also, but they're good for other type of wire running them. So they're always good, the extra pair is always good to have, it's just that these are the wrong kind for what I want. These aren't what I want. Close, but not close enough. Okay. So this will conclude the video here now. And what we do now is I'll, I'll show you all the screenshots to the maps of what we just showed you with those. That way you can actually screen shoot them and keep them. You put them in your, put them in a 3D coat paint, like Windows Paint, and then save the file. It'll be the exact same dimensions as your computer screen. So that way you can just keep them and print them out and keep one as a background like my Raspberry Pi. Uh, the pin background, I keep that on my my desktop and my computer all the time on my laptop it really comes in handy okay I hope you enjoyed the video it was all live there's no edits there's all kinds of bloopers in here but I hope you enjoyed the video it did take a lot of hard work and determination and I thank you all for watching have a very very good time learning this with me and all, all the best bye for now